Hello, my friends, and welcome to Adobe Live. I'm your host, Kieran Lewis, a freelance graphic designer based in London. And today is part two of Bristol-based designer and artist, Diana Herrera. Diana, how are you doing today? Yeah, all good, thank you. Yeah, Keep excited for part you. two? Yeah, to show you how I transform this, finally. <laughs> awesome, awesome. I feel like everyone in the chat, I'm sure, will be excited for it too. Um, as always, we love to see your comments. So if you're viewing on YouTube, Behance, a massive welcome, especially if you're on Behance, because then we can see your chat and I can share those directly with Diana. And I can see in the chat, we've got Cody, Anika, Oliver, RB, Clever, and uh, <clears throat> many, many more people. So a massive welcome to you all. Uh, before we get into it, just a little reminder. Uh, if you missed the previous stream, you can catch uh, the replay on Behance and YouTube, uh, and you can follow that with photo editing with Zia Suarez. And you can see there where she'll show you some unique editing styles, and that can fit into your lifestyle and photography. So definitely want to not miss out for that one. And today's an even special day because we also have our artist spotlight. So if anyone's quite new to what that is, that's a little segment in our stream where we basically just put a bit of love and show a bit of love to our community where we've got one artist um, and it's a very good one. So stay tuned for that. But right now it's Diana's stream. So Diana, perhaps like a little introduction for those who maybe missed uh, yesterday's stream to who you are. Yeah, sure. So um, my name is Diana Beltran Herrera. I am an artist and designer based in the UK and I work with paper as my main medium. I do sculpture, illustration, photography and installation. And what I'm doing today in the stream is showing you the process of how I get started by using Illustrator to develop my um, kind of artwork. And then I'll do a little bit of the production in paper, which is all handmade. And then I bring everything back into Photoshop to just retouch the image, finalize and put everything together. Nice. To that sounds, that's a strong plan. I love it. It's it's a very <laughs> organized plan, but um, we're, we're here for it. So um, yeah, perhaps we could just maybe dive into it. Or if you want to do like an introduction about, you know, who you are and, you know, what you do, and then obviously go straight into what we're working on for today, perhaps. Yeah, we can show again. Oops, uh, my work. Let's see if I don't miss up. Sorry. Um. Yeah. So I'll show you. Oh, actually, I have my Behance. Let's do it there on Behance. Go. Actually. So yeah. If you, I'm very. I don't use Behance that much, but if you like to come follow me, that'd be really nice. Um. So. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So what I'm explaining is, for example, in projects like this, we can have a look at this quickly. So I have the paper artwork, which is being done mm. all by hand. And then this is the kind of illustration work that goes behind to just define the shapes and the colors and create the RPs. And then this is <clears> the <throat> cap. And this is kind of the process in between, which is uh, what I get done with paper. So kind of the layering and the shadows and the textures and the colors. And then mm. after I have all that, then it's a matter of just kind of Photoshop everything and then put it together in order nice. to create like the final piece. So oh, nice. uh, this is kind of one of the closest examples of, and then okay. we have another example here, which is um, this illustration, but this is all just done in photography. So I use Illustrator as a way to give me some, you know, heads up on what mm. the intention of my work will be, color shapes, all that. Then for example, this one was just uh, something that I created in paper and I just photograph it and then clean it up in Photoshop so it doesn't have any layering or anything it's more like retouching the image nice nice I mean your work is absolutely incredible and obviously for those yesterday in the chat you know we saw a bit of the work and I mean today's an even special stream it's your, it's your last one but also it's quite nice to see that process between you know working with print and how you work in digital so um, perhaps we could delve into the first program you're in today is it Photoshop you're in or Illustrator we yeah, so we were in Illustrator yesterday, and this is the last um um kind of the last art that I got. And then mm. some people were really keen on this lady with the green background. So I went today and I cut everything in paper and I created my gradients. So nice. what I wanted to do today was kind of show you first a little video of what this um process is about. Cool. So let's just open this up and then just bring down the volume and then you can see here kind of how it happens so I have the vector file that I put apart 
And mm. then I send it to my software, which is, uh, I work with a machine called Silhouette that cuts everything for me. And then here I am kind of cleaning everything, painting everything. Then I kind of create the reliefs and give shape to the paper. And then I mm. start putting everything together in a kind of collage way. Um, and then I layer it up so then you can get all these lovely shadows and nice. details. It looks awesome. It look, I mean, it feels like real life Photoshop, right? With the layering system that you got going on there. So it looks great. I think that, <laughs> yeah, I think you just say it is. But then I realized like this sometimes is a bit too complicated, especially when I came back with that image. Mm. So I'll show the final art of that one. Nice. Um, and then I'm going to start building a new one from scratch and see how far I can get on that. So here is the kind of translation mm. to Photoshop into what I have for my fish illustration that is right in the background. So you could see that everything is now made out of paper and then I use the spray paint to create all the gradients and things. But then this one, it's a more... Um, it has a lot more process because I have every element independent. So mm. I can bring it in and out as I need. And this is what I will be doing today, which is something quite new that nice. I've been doing over the last week. <laughs> I love very- that. Um, It feels, I mean, obviously it's, it's more obviously looking at it via screen, but what I love about it is that you can almost see the texture in the definitions in the paper that you've got on the screen, which <clears throat> for me, it just adds so much more depth to the overall design. Um, It'd be great to know in the chat again, you know, what you guys what vibes you get from it are you you know hopefully you're, you're also enjoying it too and um, again any questions that you have relating to Diana's you know work her experiences her you know her journey as a creative you know please do get us in the chat and um, I'll share that with Diana while she's designing um, her process so uh, yeah I'm excited to see yeah. what you come up with today. So I'll show you here because this is obviously the one that I've done already to test that this idea was going to work so here I have my illustration which mm. I put on top to just get an idea And this is the image that came out of the camera. Now, when you see this, you know, it's very, looks very, very poor. And Mm. there wasn't a way that I was going to be able to fix this um, unless I start cropping everything out and putting it together. So Mm. this is what I used to do before um, when I wasn't using Photoshop fully for my work. And this is kind of impossible to clean up, you know, because you have to start putting every single element out. So then... Now this is the result. So I think um, I found that if I start bringing every single element like that and start doing all the process and kind of doing the collage and editing every layer and doing the shadow, this is like a new um, transition for my work in order to make it more, you know, be able to control it more. So this is what I will be doing today. So I have, I brought the frame from the other artwork and I brought the, um the little logo and thing and then here i have my background and i brought the little illustration so it will guide me in the process as i'm going to start putting everything on top that was a favorite one yesterday i remember we had our nice little collection um and again if you missed out yesterday we had a nice we're actually working illustrator and it was quite a nice to sort of see diana creating the graphics you know from scratch and and building obviously today we're in in photoshop but um i remember the visual that we can see now on screen was definitely a, a, a fan favorite Especially my favorite. I loved the uh, the detail on it. It was really cool. So let's very, see. Very cool. Let's see if I can do this. <laughs> I can. Yeah. But then we can. I can start also explaining mm. on the other one that I had ready and start printing it out. So I oh, took good. my elements, which is the ones that I will be using to put this together. So mm. what I did is obviously take everything apart in every single order, and I wanted to get this kind of gradient in Mm. there and the cheek and also i mean this one didn't come out so well but i think i can fix that so what i'm going to start doing is selecting everything and cleaning it up and then um yeah just while i start to do all this um there is also another thing that i like about already you know taking the photograph um Mm because it's already giving me information about the shadow and how I can apply that, create that, you know, because I'm going to be faking it in Photoshop. So then I can aim for for mm. what I have in here. So I'm going to bring this, and I'm going to do piece by piece until I can start constructing this face of nice. this girl. 
Yeah. And whilst you're creating that, I remember because yesterday it, it's interesting because a lot of our streams that we it's obviously mainly digital work that we operate in, and it's it's amazing to host today because obviously you work primarily with with paper. And I know yesterday we sort of touched on the pros and cons about you know working with print and with digital. Um, you know, what would you say? Is there anything we obviously working with, with you know physical elements? Is there any elements in there that you that you the pros and cons again for perhaps those who missed yesterday that you really love about working with print that you don't necessarily get on say digital? I think this. I mean, I think the 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 textures definitely are, mm. are really interesting. Also, um, the layering. Sometimes when you know I pop in straight that and I get like a really nice result in the in the paperwork done. Mm. There are there are if if especially like the air that I show you, there are too many elements that's really complicated to put up in Photoshop because it's so much information for the program to load. So mm. I think you can do all those by hand and then just import them in Illustrator and then retouch them. It really adds a lot, but uh, at the same time, it's a lot of work to control. So you can see, you saw on the yeah. feet, I didn't, I didn't nail that one in paper, even if I wanted to. Mm. Um, so sometimes it has. Um, yeah, I think I think I'll go for the. I mean, the handwork needs to be done very beautiful to a high mm. standard because then you're not going to retouch that at all. Like when I brought the fish in, the fish mm. just came straight in as I made it. Yeah. Um, so trying to make that from scratch in Photoshop is probably going to take a lot longer. Sometimes yeah. when you make something by hand and then you just bring it in, you have that, you know, tactile, the texture mm. and the, yeah, the... You know, being able to add all these details and all the shadings and colors, and I think that takes a lot longer to create in a program if you want yeah. to put making every single element from scratch. Oh, I so. get that. I um, it's funny because my brain always thinks as well, and I don't know if you've done this before, but hopefully I'm not alone in in the chat or in in the design when it does this. But when I'm say working with print or even just doing like drawings, for example, scamps, my brain tells me I want to do undo if I've done something wrong. But like, well, actually, no, this is not on a computer this is real life so like your brain tells sometimes to kind of work in the computer terminology but it's good old-fashioned pen to paper um yeah i've definitely been guilty of of doing that many times undoing when you can't und <laughs> unless you can obviously undo the script by paper and get some new paper in but um you know what i mean it's a it's a funny one yeah but, uh, yeah. So for, yeah so for example to do this face and to mm. get that 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 little you know shading in there i had to do two or three tests because they didn't mm. come out but you see already without having yeah. to much in here now i have sometimes you know the camera doesn't get the best angle so but sometimes look sometimes i just kind of match my art behind so mm. i had the little gradient in made out of in the colors in illustrator but i think such a difference it well, I nicer yeah because then you have all of the little you know spots and then sometimes if for example i have one that is too big then i will come and then just clean that out yeah and so nothing feels like you're giving so, a manicure diana i love it <laughs> yeah and and yeah. obviously you know maybe that yellow is a bit pale and i don't mm. want that so i might just going to um just go one by one and I start playing with the saturation right. just to feel, just to get a nice feel of, you know, what's the color. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit of a try, try and error, no? Like it's a bit of a, you have to kind of try, you know, to have a look how it looks and then kind of go back and forth until you're really comfortable with perhaps the final one. Yeah. That, I so I find, I find that, I mean, this is very new. So I've only been doing this process like this, this week. Mm. I've never done it before. But I'm already yeah. finding how clever it is to have every single piece loose. Because mm. if I don't like this piece, then it just goes away. Or yeah. I can change the color. Sometimes when I have a big illustration and I have like everything and everything is just one image. Yeah. I struggle to change the color of that particular thing that I want to turn green into blue. Because it mm. affects the illustration. But now when I have one by one, I can affect everything individually until I get the sensation that something nice. is for me so what i'm going to do here now is i'm going to create a shadow um which is going to going to try to mimic what i noticed in my in my photography when i did my photography 
Nice. I can see as well where uh, we're having some people there coming in thick and fast, Diana. All for you. We can um, I can see Alex has just joined us. How you doing, man? Alex is another awesome host as well and very, very cool designer. So uh, good to see her. And also it's refreshing to see I'm not the only one in the world that does almost like quick save auto saves in real life. He he mentioned uh I tried to use quick save in real life, it doesn't work. Um yeah, I hear that, pal. I I I hear that too. Um we've got a question here for you, Diana, from Robert. And he said Diana, have you used object selections tool with object finder selected to do a multiple selection? So perhaps group different assets at once. So this this one in here, yeah? The object selection tool. Oh, I yeah. do that sometimes, Patty, because I had them I had them different colors. It doesn't really pick them up. So mm. I did try yesterday. So yeah, I mean, maybe it works in here. Sometimes I try that. So if I do like try to select all of them. Mm. Sometimes it comes, you see, it's, I mean, obviously yeah. I'm in the wrong layer. Uh, wait, because I think that's, that's obviously my mistake. Oh, um, we're all guilty of that. <laughs> Don't worry. It's uh, like, yeah, I <laughs> forever do that. <laughs> yeah. So you see, it still, it doesn't pick them up and then I still mm. have to um, just come. So I'd rather just go. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. This, sure is, this is a job of a lot of patience and, but I like to, <laughs> I like to, so I have my shadow in here. I, I really mm. enjoy finding ways of, mm. you know, trying to, because it's, because this I do when I am working with paper already. Yeah. Is that yeah. maybe is this the right color? Should I just do another color? Should I just, you know, cut it again? So I think when mm. I am in the shop, I, I have absolutely no brush when I am nice. creating an image, but I guess that what I do is, and you know, sometimes I come back to this image like over and over again over the days because there mm. is something that is off that I don't like. So mm. now I have my first element. <laughs> so you, yeah. um, you made a good point about even just that word patience. I feel like yesterday we covered, <clears throat> excuse me, about working with clients and like having those uh those elements that are perhaps very people skills right in terms of you know it's one thing to have the skill but but you mentioned obviously patience being a, a factor and um i know you worked with some amazing brands dying over the you know over the years and in your work is that um again for some tips for perhaps those in the chat you know it's just a range of people students grads people in the industry for a while do you have any tips for those potentially who are just starting out who want to be get into well, obviously you mentioned patience being one of them but any other tips for those who are just um, very, very new to the industry, so. I think you just try a lot. I mean, this is this is about discipline. This is a, a, having having a lot of discipline when you are when you are starting and kind of believing in yourself. It's really important. And you know, like when I started, my work wasn't great. It didn't look like as I wanted it to look. Mm. Um, but that didn't stop me, you know, and, and there are kind of micro communities to whatever that is that you're doing. And I think that's quite beautiful because you don't need to get worried about reaching like these kind of top designers and artists in the world and get seen by them. I think yeah. if you start working your way up, this is how I started. I had very few friends that were very influential. Um, okay. There were some that were very good. There were some that were like me. There were some that were my family. But the more people that was in my networking and the more people that I could show every single day what I was doing, the more feedback that I get from them, that really encourages me to grow. So, you mm. know, never dismiss even anyone that is not creative or anything, because they have something interesting and important to say. Sure. Um, and, and if you feed from all these positive comments and all those things, then, mm. you, can, you know, I think what you need a lot is patience, discipline and confidence. And... Mm. Never be ashamed. I always say to people, don't be ashamed of what you, of what you do. It might not That's be at point. the level yeah. that you are expecting it to be. Yeah. But I think, you know, that comes from you. And you cannot be ashamed of who you are. And, you know, everybody has made themselves with time. Exactly. I mean, there are That's people that maybe, maybe there are people that were just were born very talented. But mm. most of the people that I know, they have gone where they are. They are where they are because of, you know, they just mm. put put all their energy and effort into that and they just do that every single day. Yeah, um, I get that. I um I echo, I mean, I totally echo what you what you're saying. And I think it's tricky one because we've especially in the freelance world, obviously we're both freelancers and again we have just a range of people in the chat, whether it's freelance, full time, creative or not creative, not so much necessarily, but 
confidence is one of those things that yeah some people can just have it from from very early age but some people they don't and I think it's a tricky one because when you're say very very talented but you're always conscious about how people may re you know receive your work it's I think of our line of work it's very subjective right but also it's hopefully we're in a community where people are just there to kind of you know be inspired and to see other people how they operate I mean that's very much the, the kind of ethos behind Adobe Live and what we do here because it's it's a chance for you guys you know at home um, to kind of see creatives, you know, firsthand like Diana now and, and to create some amazing work and to, and more importantly, give you guys the kind of inspiration to kind of create your own things. Because um, we love to sort of see what you guys get up to. It's whether it's the polished deliverable or whether it's the process leading up to it. For me, both sides are just as important. So, um, so yeah, just to echo what Diana was saying, that's, that's some uh, some good tips there, Diana. Just giving some gems to our lovely audience. Thank you for that. Yeah, well, you know, this takes time. And people, I, I always say, people really don't see all of the hours that you invest mm. every single day doing your work. Uh, it's a lot of, like, most people, I don't know, but I know people that they just live for what they do. And I mm. love when I meet someone like that because this is the passion that I have. Like, mm. I live for this and there is nothing else that I want to do. So for me, every time that I find something new, um, mm. that I can add something to my everything that I live for it just translates into the work that I do so it's kind I'm of quite big. curious can I yeah. ask you a question like just on that what you said because I can see how passionate you are and, and perhaps from a from a, from an early age is that something that you always knew you wanted to kind of get into into this space or was there a was there another diner in a different dimension where you wanted to perhaps do a different uh career I'm always quite curious was it more like a, you knew you wanted to be a designer from young how, how did that kind of come about I, I, I don't think that I would just wanted to be a designer. I, um, my mom used to make things all the time and yeah. she kind of put that first before I spend, I mean, we spend time together, but if I want to go do something with her, she'll be in her studio doing something. So I kind okay. of learn how to, you know, maybe spend time with her was meaning that I have to make something because she was making, then I make. Mm. And I just got really into, yeah, it was like very, very natural how it happened just made things every single day and mm. I wasn't much of a you know extrovert and with the needs of just hanging around socially and have lots of friends I were more like a, you know yeah, an intro just be at home on my own and this is the way that I spend my time just making things but I, I, I didn't draw much it was more like making things out of like plasticine or making like sculptures and things mm. um, so I wanted to study art this is what I wanted to do. Okay. But in Colombia, I think it was a bit tricky because obviously my family, they weren't um they weren't artists. Mm. Um, so we didn't have like well, nobody could support me in that. So mm. my dad say my brother was studying graphic design. So he said to me, Why don't you just pick like a type of design? And okay. then I found industrial design was good because it was about making things and I love making things. That's that's what I did every day. I just make something that's different. Cool. So, so I cool. I study industrial design and I really, really enjoy the, mm. the you know, all the learning experience of just designing things and getting an understanding of who is going to use them and what are, mm. you know, who are them for. And then we did a lot of models and prototypes and things. So, but okay. I guess, you know, sometimes you cannot plan what's going to happen in your life. Sometimes you just have to, Go with the motion. Yeah, just mm. follow, follow mm. the instinct. So I never had a, look. I never had a plan to even be doing illustration or anything. I, love that. I guess that my I, uh... plan was more to be more like a fine artist, and but then you know the the way of being a fine artist is quite difficult as well. Mm. Because it's a lot about, point. yeah, it's a lot about um grants and especially like I have two kids so then I had to be very practical in many ways like what is it going to be more beneficial to me or work better for me so mm. that I have a nice life you know you want to have a nice life you don't want to struggle yeah. um, and I That's still a... do yeah I still do do my research I still do projects that are very personal to me I still have time where I apply my design knowledge of creating fabricating a structure for an object Mm. Um, I started to apply this more recently with client work. So if a client comes, then I get to advise in what is the best way that I think for this to be made. So I feel really happy that clients now allow me to be 
kind of a designer around nice. the world of creating my work. But you have a bit of a freedom of it. I, I'd, I'd love to see that. It's interesting hearing. Um, I think it's it's great to hear because again, every creator that we have on Adobe Live, like, they have their own experiences, and, and especially from from young, from upbringing, it's always refreshing to kind of hear. You know, was it almost like a very much linear path you knew from young? But obviously, it feels like it. You had to go for a few obstacles but also different routes to kind of end up where you're in now um and again for anyone to chat it's, it's, we'd love to kind of hear you know your experiences are you just kind of starting out in design or have you been you know are you already in design for many many years and trying to change roles trying to go freelance please do let us know and um i'll definitely share that with with diana i'm sure we'd love to love to hear it um, um so we're like, working on oh sorry no yeah. go for it um like i like i like to have work always i do like to have things to do because if i don't have anything yeah. to do i kind of get be like mm, you know this is a bit boring are um, you a workaholic diana yeah i have to put it out yeah, there you better yeah i think cool. i am i have to say that there yeah. is nothing that i enjoy more <laughs> than working no, we love our i feel like with our line of work perhaps we're being very biased here but it's it's you got to enjoy what you do right i mean that's not for every single work in the world people obviously have to work for many many reasons but with our line of work there is definitely a sense of enjoyment with it and and i feel like if you can enjoy it that makes it even more fruitful and a bit more more impactful um with what you create um especially if you have some really great clients to to work with too i um, just think like you know i i always thought like in times where i didn't have a lot of commission work and i have to go through the thought that oh, i have to start applying for a, a job <laughs> yeah what am i going to do like i don't think i am good for anything maybe mm. maybe, maybe i am you know maybe i'm good at different things but just the whole thought of having to just leave this behind yeah. to start earning money so i can support myself and my family was was really mm. scary and mm. every time that i would reach the point that i have to just send a cv to someone i would just get a new client and i'll be like oh i'm so happy because <laughs> allowing nice. me to exist within this space for the next month and yeah. yeah this year has been great because i didn't have to think about that anymore this year is just like one after the other which is amazing mm. uh, you know what i love about that what you're saying it's i always think that these experiences are not luck, you know, I mean, sometimes in the world, you need a bit of luck to kind of get by, but you know, you, I'm a very firm believer in, you know, that hard work and you put yourself in the right place, right time. So it's um, like you mentioned that experience of, you know, not having a client and you put CVs out and eventually one comes, you know, that is you being proactive and, and putting yourself in spaces where opportunities kind of, kind of rise. So um, that's really awesome to her. Very, very awesome to her. And, and um, also, yeah. also these days we have all this wonderful help with, um, you know all these social media tools so you don't even have to go to like a physically anywhere which is <laughs> yeah. you know just update, your, I love it. <laughs> just update your portfolio yeah. and then show people around but you know i feel that networking is very important um mm. i always feel that you never know who could be beneficial for your for your future so it's just the more friends that you have the more people yeah. that you meet the more connections that you create they will label something and sometimes it's about just like voice to voice you know maybe someone mm. needs service and then they feel they can do it so then they just voice out and then you get the job because of that reason so i think i i didn't do that very strongly years ago and i feel i am more out on the scene <laughs> you know like trying to yeah. just play with more people trying to be there all the time keeping yeah. you know keeping the content flowing just make you know reminding people that i am there working and that i am doing new things yeah. uh, it, it's funny because sometimes you um you master something and then you're really happy about what you did but it starts becoming dated and then you mm. feel like you just start mastering something new and it's just about always pushing 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 sure. really hard and i and think it, um mm -hmm. sorry to interrupt you then yeah yeah just showing people always what can you do what is you know mm. what is new that you're making um how you're making it better how you're making it different it's all it's it's a lot of so if i mean if you want to succeed you have to work hard i think that's the that's the yeah best, well, on, uh, on that topic of uh, as i say you mentioned like friends having community i mean you guys right now in the chat you're in the you're in the right place because you know literally it, it feels like a family and and again i can see all you lovely people in the chat with all your all your great comments um and again i will definitely get through them and, and whilst diana's designing but um again you are very much in the right place to 
to be you know inspired and to be immersed and um and what we work i mean obviously right now a question i want to ask you Diana, just on the on the mm -hmm. design front and we're working with now um and there's a question which tends to come up with one of our hosts mainly anika who could be in the chat um with saving files and like even like you know layering and like color codes are you how does it work with you when it comes to design because i feel like every design is very different with how they structure their filing systems and i mean i'll put it out there i'm a color code guy on layers which is a bit mm -hmm. ocd but not everyone's like that do you are you a um folder in subfolders are you uh like to save as are you what a <laughs> and that's a little hint by the way to save as but yeah what I kind have of design to say yeah. I am very messy when it comes to Photoshop, very okay. messy, because I get carried away so much into trying and experimenting <laughs> with the colors and everything that yeah. sometimes I forget what I have done and how to go back to what I did before. Yeah. And sometimes I just add so much on top of it that I forget, which is the one that I had to turn off. To get Diana, that. that's so, naughty. <laughs> this is the most organized ever that you've seen for so in my uh, life i love that we'll get we'll get in the uh the, are we getting the vip treatment because we're on a stream we're getting <laughs> look i, I under the shadow the paper cut and the, uh, and the uh, color and the saturation but that. oh you, ha you have to see my photoshop files before it's a mountain of things on <laughs> and i don't even name name them i never put like a number or a name nothing nothing because uh, i don't do photoshop i do sure. paper Sure. So. Well, I mean, that's I, I love that. That's your little justification. That, and if that works for you, and also, do you know what? I'm going to be devil's advocate here. And, and I'm going to, I mean, I definitely layer and, and just for my sanity, but I'm a firm believer in, you know, everyone has their own way of working. And potentially, you know, if it's a way that you kind of like a method to the madness, let's say. Um, and the reason why I say it is because and there's another question for you. I'm quite curious. With desktops, I always find like when people say work onto a desktop, which is totally fine. I'm not going to be that guy that's totally cool with that, but it does drive me a little bit crazy when I see loads of messy desktops. I have to do like a the old order and alignment. Are you a um, everything on desktop kind of person? I mean, you're not sure, of course not, but like are you a... Uh, <laughs> do you, do you, how are you? I feel like I put you in the, put you in the dark there. <laughs> it's, you it know, it's the... funny because I am, how do I say, I am tidy. Yeah. But sometimes I'm not very organized and it's hard to find a system. Because how do you, I mean, it, it'll be easier if everything that you do work-wise is digital. So then mm. it's easier for you to just label things in terms of dates or months or yeah. projects. But imagine that I have digital, a sketch, photograph, paper artwork, and then in process. Mm. So when I do a project, I have like five different fields of information. Mm -hmm. I have my sketches, my vector files, the vector files that I use for cutting. Then mm -hmm. I have all the images of my process. Then I have all of the final arts and then I have Photoshop. So that is a huge amount of information. And if I am working client and client and client on the line and I have deadlines, yeah. I don't know. I just start making folders of everything. <laughs> so I have like yeah. two or three hard drives. And okay. all my information is along all those files. So whenever I have to find something for like a magazine or a mm. or a blog or something, I really struggle trying. And you know, I don't have time to to tidy. It's difficult. It's that kind of thing that you're working <laughs> so much, and then you have so much yeah. information, and then you're like, yeah, when they when they. Uh, that's, know. That's, do you know what it is? I to be fair, I'd be lying to you if I didn't say I I also have them. To be fair, I have that digitally but also in real life you know you, you kind of get to that whole i want to tidy it one day and then you start to slowly see it piling up to the, the tip of my everest and you're like mm, i need to get around to doing that um but yeah it's i can see in the chat right now it's funny to see everyone's uh thoughts on how they are when it comes to, to the cleanliness we've got cody he said um i do not have a i do not have a messy desktop i've gotten better at saving in more organized files so uh, yes someone i can relate to for sure and then we've got oliver who said um you'd like my desktop kieran there's nothing on it at all there we go tidy tidy desktop tidy mind That's i do okay. i do like say. a tidy yeah. i do like a tidy desktop i i have to yeah. say like when when it starts getting cramped and messy i can deal with that but it's also trying to how do you find your system that system is the tricky mm. one because it's mm. like do you group by date do you group by job i, I find the best system is by date and by month or by year, yeah. by the amount of yeah. clients that I did on, on that year. But yeah, yeah information is, is tricky. 
And that do we have time these days to tie the information is a really good question. Oh, so, you never know. I feel like these days things are forever updating and, and technology is kind of there to make life, you know, a lot more easier for us. And actually on that topic of technology updating, it would be criminal of me not to mention about the amazing updates that you do get with a lot of the Adobe products. You know, there's a lot of things out there um, and more so with the Adobe streams that we do, you know, we do creative challenges, we do, you know, things that you guys can follow along, but it just makes your lives a lot easier with, you know, projects that you work on to kind of streamline the process. Um, like Diana was saying, time is, time is a limited resource. So you kind of feel like, yeah, if you can have things to make your life easier, definitely take it. So um, yeah, that's my little tip there. If you get time after this stream, definitely watch some more, uh, more streams and uh, have fun with some design work. But, uh, but yeah, I can see what you're doing right now, Diana. It's looking, it's looking good. Colors looking lovely together. Yeah, I think, I mean, I didn't get this gradient very well produced, but, um, you know, it also adds kind of like a skin texture in a way. Mm. So if I if I take it off, then we just have the plain color, which is really nice, but I feel the graining here mm. adds much, you know. So, yeah, I do I do like all this. I have also my planet, which I was preparing before, which is probably not nice. this one in here. Um, was yeah. that meant to fit perfectly inside the? Uh, is that like a different? Is that a different uh, design with the with the globe? Because that that sort of fit so perfectly in the head shape there. It felt like astronaut kind of. That's I don't true. know if it's just me. Maybe maybe I'm zoning out there, but it, it looks it works so well. It was like a happy accident. Then. I don't know. Yeah, no, I didn't. Maybe. I didn't think about that. So yeah. this planet, I I was very lazy to cut this planet again because yeah. because it's um if if I turn this off, you can see it's um it has three pieces. Ah. So it has this single piece, this piece, and this piece. And when I mm. cut it out in the for the fish piece that I was making, that planet. Let's see which is this one. Let's turn it around. The gradient is very difficult to get all together mm. because, um, because I have to spray the three pieces differently at times. Mm. So also when I cut it out and I spray, it, they kind of curl because obviously the paper has been touched by water and then it affects the structure of the paper. Mm. So I was very lazy at doing that again so then i thought i just bring the one that i had before and i tried to fade the texture in photoshop to something that feels familiar to something that feels like maybe this is the kind of grain that i could get if i was spray mm. painting in black and and with a background of green so mm. i feel like this texture and i left it like that i want to say that's lazy i feel that's that's you being streamlined with your with your work process you i'm just gonna yeah. soften it there yeah no i get <laughs> i get it um that's looking great it's look it's this is and i can see as well in the chat it's nice to sort of see um we're kind of going on that topic about you know how we organize our files and working with clients we've got uh marta who says uh, i organize by client project software and then versions so um yes that's a good shout that's that's actually quite similar the way i i work the software one's an interesting one as well actually breaking it into the different you know the programs that you work with as well um because i always find it, when you work in this kind of you know almost like formula um structure it's good for your mindset but also when you have to send work to take to clients and if you're if you're a freelancer and you need to send it to an in-house design team you know you just kind of make their life a little bit easier when you have everything nicely organized and then um, no one wants to go through files and folders and folders of stuff um yeah i try and have a have a <laughs> have a nice mindset for in terms of like how other people will sort of if they tend to work with the files later on so um there we go. So it's great to hear. Great to hear your uh, versions, Marta. And we've got Steve who mentions an external hard drive is sitting next to me for reassurance. Yes, we love a good external hard drive. Um, That's true. Like I do, I do have, I keep on buying more, mm. more <laughs> hard drives. You know, when yeah. one is packed, then I have probably like every year in a different one. And then- Do you and fill up? Do you fill up or do you just move on like to the next? Because you just kind of feel like you need, because I, I, I'm definitely the latter, which is terrible actually. Do, do you I, have I, like I, a few? Yeah, like I fill them up so much, especially with the photography, because the photography takes so much space. Uh, sure. So I don't want, I don't, you know, I used to delete things a lot. 
Mm. And that wasn't a very clever thing to do because over the years, clients have gone back to like the archive of my work and then they say, oh, can we have this image in high res? And I'd be like, mm, no. <laughs> you know Where that is that gone? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so yeah. nowadays I don't, I don't delete anything. Everything that I do, I save it. Um, nice. So I have my iCloud storage, which is like dead because I don't use it anymore. It's packed. Yeah. And I have like now a four terabyte one. That is the one that I nice. am using. There is a lot of, uh, yeah, different things out there, whether it's, you know, mentioned Google Drive or, you know, whether it's retransfer. Um, there's a lot of Dropbox as well. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it just makes your life a lot easier. And to be honest, just for peace of mind, if, if I have work, say, saved on my hard drive, I will definitely save to the cloud just for sanity. I always think if there was a, a fire, I mean, very dramatic now, but if there was a fire in my house, not that I'll take the hard drive first, I mean, who does that? But at least I would know that my work is saved somewhere that no one you know in the cloud it's safe it's there um that's perhaps the most dramatic experience you're ever going to hear on the adobe live but um but yeah it's it, i always find it's good to have it saved in a separate space um that's not a charge do you do you kind of tend to save your work too i do the same as you um yeah. I, I everything that i have i save it in in the cloud also because you never know like what if you never know but, but i've thought about the fire so many times and i always think like what <laughs> that i will save my computer and the ipad <laughs> I, need my I don't that's know terrible what isn't it yeah that's terrible to be, uh, the electrical <laughs> items <laughs> especially if you have a deadline in progress and <laughs> the last thing that you want to do Imagine. Would that go for your mind first? Like the, uh, oh no, my, my client deadline. No, no, no. Maybe the kids actually. <laughs> then the client deadline. Um, yeah. My children. No, I need to. But <laughs> th th doesn't it really give you anxiety, the fact that you have all these deadlines and then the jobs don't come to an end and then you have to carry them for weeks and then you just want to see them out. I just want this mm. job out. I don't want to have any doing with this anymore. Um, mm. That happens a lot, doesn't it? With um, I feel like, with free well in, in definitely full-time as well but a freelance especially you might find yourself in a bit of a basically there's no end in sight there's no end in sight and it's it feels like you're just kind of going in loops with clients with and actually and that kind of leads to a nice question about you know how do you deal with your clients um diana with like feedback and the men's because we all have our own ways of doing it and sometimes people write it in the in the contract see the agreement how many rounds of amends and feedback there is do you have a structure and process of how you kind of deal with clients when it comes to amends and feedback or even or even a tricky client potentially if they've got some real you know tough tough feedback or amends how what's your kind of a uh, method of dealing with that i think that is i think that is the last thing that you acknowledge when you sign a contract is how many rounds of feedback are you going to go through with a particular client and when i have done that in the past i forget to state that at the early stage of of the of the job and yeah. sometimes they can go, there are clients that can go actually forever and ever and ever. And I, I was doing this, I was designing. A long <laughs> yeah. I was designing this puzzle last month and it has taken me months to make it. And yeah. every time I send this new image, then she'll be, it's wonky in the corner. And I was thinking, but it's made by hand. You know, I'm not <laughs> digitally, I've made it by hand and I have to photograph it and make sure that everything fits within the square. And I tried to Photoshop mm. it as far as I will get. And then mm. the feedback just came to a point that it was very silly. And I had to say, I think at this stage, I need to charge you more. And then she said, ah, oh, we can send the file and then we'll handle it ourselves. Yeah. But the, Sometimes you need to kind of like, um, you know, flexibility with our line of work is, is important, but I always find there's a fine line between being flexible and how can I say in a PG word, not taking liberties. There we go. That's PG enough. Um, Cause yeah, it, it, it's a tricky one because yeah, you definitely want to do your best and you want to make sure obviously the, you know, both parties are happy and especially the client. But if you kind of see that things are going in a space where it doesn't really feel like there's actually, you're not going anywhere forward. It feels like it's one step forward and definitely three steps back. You kind of have to, like you said that Diana, where you kind of, you know, you, 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 you kind of draw the line and you kind of say, well, actually, we can move forward, but actually potentially a, a charge will be inclined on it. And maybe that's a good thing for them because it kind of gets them thinking, well, was it necessary? And are they just kind of doing things for maybe the sake of it? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I feel when I have used that, the budget, I need more budget. They, they, they always come off. So <laughs> they, they always them away. Like, no. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes they feel yeah. that you actually don't have any more clients and that you don't have anything else to do, that your life is yeah. just, you know, clients mm. don't know 
that you don't work exclusively for them and that you mm. have you know family life sleep eat another yeah. client um Very so sometimes they get very you know they just want the work to be done quickly Very good point and, and uh perhaps anyone anyone on the client in the call that in the call in the in the chat sorry i should say that is a client uh, by the way this is not a we hate client it's just actually it's quite refreshing to to hear another creative you know with, and this is real life this is let's be honest this is you know real human experience of how you deal with you know other clients so um definitely get those in the chat and it's quite a nice time to say i mean well i mean the time is kind of flowing by but you know we're a good 45 minutes into the stream and if you are you know just joining us a massive welcome you're in the right place um and again we have the lovely diana herrera artist and designer and she's creating um a nice postage stamp collection and today we're working primarily in, in photoshop um and you can see her working with different graphics so any questions you guys have please do get that in the behance chat and I will share that directly with Diana. So uh, a welcome, and we'd love to hear your comments. And if you have any tips or tricks, <laughs> then yeah, you tricks. can share them. Because... Sharing is caring. The... <laughs> because I've noticed that in Photoshop, you know, sometimes you take mm. the longest doing something is because you don't know of all the, all mm. of the tricks and things that could really make your life easier. So I wasn't doing this process like this before, I, um, and I feel like this one is helping me a lot more with yeah. what are we doing i mean just perhaps let me talk us through a little bit like your um yeah maybe for so, those who are quite new to photoshop as well yeah so what i do is i bring the piece from my other file and you see i had to so i was in here and then i select the piece and then i brought it in then as mm. i brought it in because the background was gray it was really difficult to just mask to just have the whole piece in itself mm. so i was thinking what's the best solution that i can do for this one and so i go to select i select the element and when i do have all my elements select which i you know maybe i just if i go for like a higher tolerance in here um then i what i the way that i found to clean the edges because it'd be really nice if you have all those edges really nice clean and smooth is just go to select unmask and then here you can you have different mm. overviews and so i use often the black and white one and try to start smoothing it so when i bring it you know so like i do a nice cut of the yeah. shape and when i bring it to my artwork it feels that it's clean so i like the way it looks mm. so that i have it in here and you see already i had yeah. this before that was really nasty and i don't like it and now i have it that is clean now so it's already nice. to go to into my um, artwork, which I'm creating this illustration of this girl that has Very the planet cool. behind. Planet, planet, planet head. I feel like planet brain. Um, I'm getting that vibe. <laughs> and again, I mean, for those, it's always great to, especially if you're just starting out, um, you know, in the creative space, or you're just curious about how design works. One thing you'll realize is that, you know, there's a lot of design programs out there, but it's quite nice because a lot of them are quite intuitive how, well, one one will perhaps work with the other. So yesterday we were in Illustrator and we kind of brought in graphics and elements. You can, you know, drag and drop, paste in place, you know, um, bring in EPS files. But it's great because you start to realize how different programs will work with one another. Um, and again, that's something that you get that with more time you practice, you know, perhaps more Adobe Lives that you watch. You start to pick up um, little tips and tricks like what you can see what Diana's working on now. Um, so yeah, it's great to kind of see the process. Um, and also, Diana, I feel like, I should give you a thank you as well because like, I feel like you've you changed my mindset of how we look at poster stamps because yesterday we touched on it's like a forgotten I don't know many people in the chat please let me know in the chat if, if poster stamps are your thing of course but I feel like it's like a forgotten thing slightly because a lot of design work does go into it and perhaps these days it's all on emails but it's quite refreshing to, to see so much design going into a uh a poster stamp so thank you Diana you've uh you made me see the light I want to start collecting some uh Possibly well, you weekend, could right? you could use them for references, and you know, like the graphics yes. of them are very interesting. Mm. So I'm always trying to go, not kind of go against, um, but sometimes I feel that it gets too crowded looking at the same platforms in order to gather inspiration, mm. and it's you know you have like all the trends going on and on and on, 
and it mm. feels really i mean either you end up following them and then you work end up looking like somebody else's and then then you lose your identity and what you're doing because you just mm. sometimes jumping into things that really don't belong to you and then everyone like we we can pick certain types of work really easily and be really inspired about them and start following kind of copying or imitating them in a way mm. but I feel um I've tried to be more specific with the way that I bring my resources in so I like to go more I've just been doing uh archives online archives I do a lot of behance as well these days which I think nice. is great um yeah so that's really cool I mean I remember when we when we first um and again perhaps in the you, you wouldn't know this but so myself and Diana we caught up maybe I think it's like two weeks ago before we had our our first stream and I remember you saying about you know how you find research sometimes stepping away from the screen and just going out you know whether it's going to a library going to an exhibition um because we almost forget like that is very much a nice way of of giving your brain perhaps a little bit of a, a digital detox you know and you can kind of find more space to kind of put new inspiration in um you know it's great to let you know let us know in the chat you know what is your uh how do you guys find inspiration are you uh perhaps you're finding it right now being on adobe live stream who knows please do let us know but it's it's nice to uh because yeah it's nice to find out how other people have their different ways of how they collate um their inspiration yeah because it feels i mean it's so easy to just find things online and then you have all of the at the same time it's a lot of information and sometimes mm. I'm exhausted of just having to choose something from all this. Um, mm. You know, it's just a lot. But when I find like an illustrator or an artist that I really like, I, I was telling you the other day, I love to see, I mean, it's not like people that die, but people that have this very long careers because I love to see the whole evolution of how somebody started and how they, you know, came to the peak of their work. Mm. and well became like the most known of the things that they did and I know like you know there is professions that you want to be known really really quickly in your life like I don't know maybe sports you always get to be known quite early in your eight you know in your 20s or something yeah but I think that especially with artists they get better as they get older because it's yeah it's very true that you cannot fake and you need mm. experience, a lot of experience in order to be able to, you know, pull all the information together and then just deliver it within your work. So yeah. I do like very, very much your people um, mm. because it's the best place where I can learn um, ex about experience. How That's they, a very good point. Yeah, how they came to do the things that they did and what drove them to that mm. place. So that's what I like to do the old school, go to the library. <laughs> No, yeah, I love that. That's 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 definitely not old school too. I think um there we go. Like we're like a fine wine, we get better over age, right? There we go. It's um it's something that yeah, experience is something that you can't force it, right? You kind of have to just let it organically do its thing. Um and I always feel like when you enjoy it even more, it it, it goes down a lot more smoother, um, potentially, you know, how you kind of you know learn and, and digest the information. But um no, I'd love to, to hear. And I can see as well in the chat, we've got, um, so Cody mentioned about, um, I find inspiration through my passions, interests and other artists. So um, yeah, that's that's always cool. And definitely check out Cody's work because her work is insane. Um, so yeah, that's it's quite cool to see how you uh, find inspiration. Do you know what? Do you ever find inspiration, Diana, from like, it's, it's kind of weird, like a weird thing to say, but it's going to the supermarket, like I realized the amount of different types of brand, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a branding project as such. It's just more how... People have worked with typography, imagery in a very small space, depending on what, what the packaging is, of course. But I always find that going to the supermarket is I kind of get a bit bombarded by like the different types of styles and, and packagings out there and how things are placed. Like that is also um, quite a, obviously going to a gallery is, is perhaps a bit more smarter, but but the supermarket is just, you'd be surprised. It's, it's something that, and again, it's for the mass. It's not necessarily for people in particular. It's a supermarket. So I always find... You know, going to a gallery is perhaps quite niche because it is potentially for a particular audience. Not necessarily, but it could be. Um, but a supermarket is literally for the mass. So it's quite cool to see whatever designs are out there. Um, and there's some, yeah, there's some cool funky designs out there. Um, I, let us know in the chat what, what else designs you like, <laughs> for sure. I, I do agree with you because I do a lot of that too. I love, I mean, in the UK, it's quite nice because like if you go to Marks and Spencer, you get all of the branding that is mm. not like any other branding. And then it's really beautiful to see how they make products. So I don't think I did have that experience when I live in Colombia because the 
design there is a bit heavier. Okay. Um, you know, it's not so well. I I mean, I haven't been there recently, so I can say. Uh, but the kind of the gross like of a big supermarket where you go where everyone goes there is like for everyone. Mm. It's interesting the type of design that you find in there. But when you go like to, for example, in the UK or in Europe, you always find it's very, very refined. There is a lot of graphic <laughs> design, yeah. uh, you know, the printing process and the uh, colors that they use and the embossing mm. and all that. It's like you almost don't want to touch those products. Because <laughs> it's it's so preserved. <laughs> and I have to say that whenever I travel to Asia, when I go mm. to like China or um it's crazy it's crazy because they put yeah. so much illustration into there and sometimes you end up buying things just because you want to collect them <laughs> not because yes. you're going to consume so them. true yeah. that's such a designer habit isn't it i feel like it's and that's a really good point like traveling when you travel and you go to somewhere else and you see you know different cultures and how you know as a community how they operate and, and the kind of work and, and the branding that is always quite a an interesting one i remember going to the u.s um into like in, in Manhattan in particular and that was just again and for anyone who's in Manhattan hey hey what's up but like it's it, there is so much like to digest in terms of the branding and the elements and whether it's on taxis or whether it's on billboards it's just it, it's cool it's interesting but it can also be slightly overwhelming as well um yeah I don't know if you find that if you've been to the US but it's it's yeah uh, I mean, I've been to I've been to New York and I think it's like it's it's, it's a wow it's a wild thing of definitely seeing definitely wow yeah, the, the design culture in there and, and mm. all the things, you know, the interior design. I, I really love interior as well, like going to like a nice cafe, mm. buying like yes. a nice, yeah, I, I guess that in the UK we're really, really heavily influenced by that because everything is quite interesting yeah. in here. But I do love collecting tags. I, sometimes when I buy clothes, I really like the branding of, okay. and, I keep, and I keep, you know, keep the label because it's the tags like, on the uh you mean like yeah. the, the, the the price on it or do you mean the label no no on, no, on the actual... no like the label okay. with the branding like i buy a brand gotcha. from town and they are super good at illustration and they illustrate beautifully all of the clothing and then when nice. you get a new collection they always make a new label that comes with uh, yes of course yeah. And, nice. then, and then collecting all those is really useful because you also see the transition of how the brand has grown over the years and how mm. much design are paying you know, it's really nice to see like they don't just grow within the branding, but they grow with the photography and with the way they mm. present the brand and then with the social media. So it's like creativity affects mm. many different fields, not just one part of of mm. when you consume a brand, you're consuming so many elements and assets that they're creating in relation to like the branding and the experience. So that's I a good do. point. That's a good point. You, I mean, you almost feel like, you, especially your clients, they kind of need to evolve right into a point because you kind of feel like it, it could easily become very um stagnant or just very stale depending on if it depends on the, the audience of course or who you have but it it doesn't hurt to definitely um keep things afresh and that could be via social media campaigns you know campaigns in, in, in person anything like that but um yeah it, it's always refreshing to to kind of keep and to be fair there's a lot of cool brands that do it really well um you know let us know in the chat you know any brands that you guys are absolutely digging in terms of like their branding um for me it's it's always be i don't know if you know them diana but um you might do in, being in england the uk but innocent smoothie they their branding is so so and even the tone of voice as well i've always i did my dissertation without geeking out too much but when i was at uni about them and, and did some research but as a brand and like the ethos it's you know and even the visuals it, it's very very cool um of how they yeah, operate and it always it's, keeping on track because it's very subtle it's um it's it's very subtle the way that they um have created this whole branding in mm. relation to you know smoothie juice because you have Tropicana on the other side and it's just like crazy with all these elements <laughs> yeah. which is uh, but it's very distinctive it's very classic and there's things that you always will remember in the back of your head but mm. I really like the ones that are very kind of minimal in a way very yeah. because I sometimes I feel to have less is so difficult. To, you know it's so easy to yeah. get that within <clears throat> within the design um, very true very true. and it depends on the, the generation i remember we had a a stream uh, about a few weeks ago um with a really cool designer who was working um and her audience was gen z um i'll get that right that's correct but again it's, it's, a, it's a completely different type of uh audience that will be kind of digesting information um and sometimes things need to be a bit 
let's just say it's a different way of how you know within our within our age space it, it will be and, and vice versa if it's someone a bit more mature um you know it's a completely different um uh sort of style of what you tend to like based on the, you know, the generational as well so you know sometimes less is more but it also depends on the gen because i feel like i've seen some designs my sister for example is like 19 so she's gen z and the designs i'm thinking that she likes i'm like wow i it's not my cup of tea but then again when i was her age and then my say my older brother would have said the same thing about you know my, my taste in, in things as well so it definitely changes throughout the years um so yeah we're always always good for that but um on the topic of design though going back to as i said design what are we working on so i can see a lot of things are happening right now and it's looking it's looking good yeah. so much so textures. I, I put the hair now i'm working on the hair and then after i'm just going to bring the flowers and the leaves so i think i'll be able to have this done by the end of the stream nice so nice. for the for the inside texture of the hair i have mm. my piece which was here. But this one was difficult to cut because I was telling you so many of these pieces are very small. So if I wanted to cut them and layer them in order to get like the texture and the shadow, mm. I wasn't going to be able to replicate this configuration by hand. So for this one, I'm using the digital um, vector and I'm just overlapping on the hair piece mm. that I have, which has the paper texture. And maybe see if I can steal some of that texture from behind to just make it feel more. But I don't think that in elements like this, you really will notice if it was made out of paper or if it was made out of a mm. paper file. So I don't think I'm really worried about I mean, that. It looks, it looks pretty, it's great. Like if you can you zoom in a little bit more, because my brain is, is, I mean, literally I'm seeing like a brain. I feel like the, the, the kind of the nerve endings and like... The, <laughs> I'm seeing like the Salibra of like someone's anatomy. Do you know what I mean? Like the way I know it's obviously not supposed to be this more petal, but mm -hmm. just the, the structure of it all, it looks, it's so intriguing. There's a lot happening, but in a way that is so digestible. And it's obvious that it's on, it's on top of layers, which I think you've done it really, 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 really well in terms of how it, how it looks. Well, because uh, I've done, I've only done one couple for an illustration of a book. And it's the only time that I've done people in my work. And every time I have to think about them, I don't like to add, you know, I think something that you need to be really good at is the expression because it really mm. tells of the, um, you know, if you draw wonky eyes or an eye that is not right, it can really mess up with the whole uh, facial expression of this person that you are creating. And because yeah. people know my strongest point, I always feel maybe I just like to contemplate the silhouette because it's already telling you that this is somebody, but then mm. it's up to you as to what expression you put into this person. Mm. So I always like to focus in the hair because it's like the area where I have the more space to create detail. Otherwise, the other, the other area I could create detail is in the clothing if I did like some kind of, you know, lines that create mm. texture. But mm. I still don't feel very comfortable in imagining, you know, would you imagine an eye and a nose and a mouth? Well, do you know, it's funny when you said that, but even now I, cause I, perhaps cause the jawline, the way it is, but it, the sex is not obvious, which I think is, makes it even more cool. It's not, it, I feel like it's totally subjective. I don't know what you guys think of you see a man, man or woman, but I feel like it could, it could really be either one. And I think that there's something quite nice about it being neutral. So, I mean, you add eyes, you add lips, possibly, you know, it starts to define features and you may see a particular, you know, sex but i feel like in in this case it's it's so neutral which is which i think is really really cool really and then even the colors as well i mean colors obviously don't define obviously um man or woman of course not but sometimes you you find certain ones potentially might do but in this case it's so neutral that it, it feels I like think, it could cross anything yeah I, th I think that's a good point i think it kind of creates a just maybe mm. i just want the essence of a human and i don't want to specify yeah type of human i want it to be so it's something like that's that. relatable but it's not too overly relatable for you I um, like that. and, and yeah. i like that it's quite a calming image in a way it's not very you know it feels very peaceful like a very like contemplating um uh, mm. person looking at the horizon um we're in a komodo we're in a komodo maybe I'm, I'm just i'm just saying i don't know if that extends the stamp but it feels like they're wearing a nice komodo with the fluffy orange hair and um it's funny because reverb has just said so there's no adam's apple there, which also maybe then again could as a good one Rob. um yeah potentially tell but it's again it, it's very neutral but um it's a great great design 
Um, and actually, I would say, because I mean, time is definitely going crazy. So we mm -hmm. are definitely over an hour into our stream. So if you have just joined us, um, again, a massive, massive welcome and thank you for joining us. And today we have Diana Herrera. Um, she is an artist designer um, based in Bristol from Colombia. And right now she's working on a nice collection of postage uh, stamps. And you can see one in particular she's working on via Photoshop. So um, again, any questions you guys have, please do get that in the Behance chat and I will share it directly. And also on another note, just to kind of add, because it is also a special day, especially on part two of our stream, is that we have an artist spotlight. So that's coming up in about 30, 35 minutes or time or so. Um, so definitely stay tuned for that because um, we won't say who it is because it's a nice surprise. So, uh, but definitely stay tuned because it's a, it's a good one. But for now, we're watching Diana create some magic. So uh, please stick around. Yeah, I just got a bit lost in here because I did the gradient and I wanted I didn't want the 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 shadow to be a gradient shadow. I want the shadow mm. to be the same color, like you know, in in both. Because when I put it on, mm. shadows are not like gradient shadows. They are like the same color of a shadow that goes from the beginning mm. to the end. Um, it's like light to dark, no? Slightly. Yeah, so it looks like yeah. it's light to dark, but I wanted it to be. So I don't know. I tried to replicate this and it didn't work. So I think I'm going to erase a little bit of the shadow to just soften it up without having to compromise my artwork. Nice. Sometimes I do, if I want like less of something, then maybe I will mm. just go and I just erase a little bit because it could, you know, no, maybe this is what I wanted. And so I yeah. didn't need to do the shadow again. So I guess I go my shadows. And one. <laughs> I love that. I remember um, yesterday, I can't remember it was, we had, a, we had a really good comment yesterday about everyone. And again, everyone's loving your designs. I can see on the chat today, but yesterday we had one about, they loved your design so much, Diana, that they wanted you to submit them to Royal Mail and then see if we can uh, actually get them. I mean, I would definitely buy buy a few stamps. I'm just saying. Now you're gonna have to go out your way now, Diana, and make make these happen. <laughs> make it into a real thing, and um, yeah, you're gonna have a whole influx of Adobe Live audience <laughs> purchasing yeah, your custom made stamps. Mean, yeah, that'd be nice because I really, <clears throat> I think I'll really enjoy doing that. Definitely. Um, and Where actually, I was, was going to. Oh, oh, sorry. Go for oh, it. sorry. I was just going to say. Where do you? Maybe I need to get in the job of trying to find <clears throat> the place to submit my designs. Well, yeah. I mean, to be honest, I always find like there's a lot of um, not so about places to submit, but I know in terms of like promotion and, and places to kind of get your stuff out there. Like a lot of blogs out there, right? A lot of creative blogs. Um, you know, UK ones or US ones or just globally ones where. It's great to kind of get your work out there. Um, you know, just putting out there, you've got brands like, you know, Creative Boom, it's nice that. Um, I mean, do, do you kind of follow any particular blogs, um, Diana, in terms of like for your, re or just checking out stuff to see what's out in the community? Do you have a, a list of favorite ones or? Yeah, so I think I do. I do a lot of, <clears throat> it's nice that I like, I like the We Transfer blog because they have yeah, a percent and, and, and I yeah. really like that one. Uh, I do like Decent. Good shout. Design, design, think, yeah, yeah. yeah design is love, awesome. Yeah, I love that one. And mm. yeah, I think I mean I get featured a lot in Colossal in Design Boom. So every year mm. they always do like uh it's nice because every year they come back and they say, Oh, we just want to see what you're doing, and then I send a mm. new one. And then when Colossal is the main one that shares, and then after they share, then maybe I get in just a box or I get in design boom or I start getting in different ones, I get printed after that. Mm. So the blogs are very important places for I think mm. they were, I don't know how they are nowadays, but I felt they were very strong five years ago because everyone was really gathering inspiration from them. I guess yeah. that nowadays you have everything out on Instagram or on Behance. That's interesting. Do you know what's funny? Inter like we had a, <clears throat> and again, my, my brain is not as sharp as it used to be, but we had, I can't remember the name, but we had an artist who was featured on Adobe Live and we touched on this as well because the days of, finding research you know visual research i should say via you know pinterest or behind and there's loads out there but 10 times instagram seems to be the one where people screenshot quickly or they just add and bookmark and they kind of go back to it and i mean like for me i'm not totally against it because I, I definitely do the same thing i think it's um kind of going back to what we discussed before where it's good to have a nice collection of different um you know things of you know where you can find visual research so uh there we go so uh 
That's all right. It's the, 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 the joys of live stream, people. We will get occasional, <laughs> occasional I, caller. Then I put my phone down to uh, have to put airplane mode now. You know what it is? If someone's calling because they want your stamps, Diana. That's it. You're in demand. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I was going to yeah. actually ask, just before we kind of get into what you're working on now, is um, and it's still design related, but when you're creating, you know, different types of projects and, and work, what do you kind of tend to do in terms of like, you know, for music or inspiration? Do you have music in the background? Do you have to have in complete silence? What's kind of like your your place of zen when you're in the in the real flux of doing a project? I like I, I like music. Um, I do always have music. Sometimes I feel that I kind of got silent for too long. Yeah. Uh, but, I, but I always have this kind of um, I have like a playlist that I play every day if I don't have anything. Uh, it's it's almost music that it doesn't really bother me and that it can just sit in the background of, of, of my head. That it, I don't like anything that is too distracting or too disturbing mm. or anything relaxing and happy, nothing like depressive. I can deal with anything that is like, oh, too emotional. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my husband likes drum and bass and I feel that that's... Does bizarre. he? <laughs> and you share, you share the studio, no? I can imagine how that works out if he's playing drum and bass in the studio. Uh, and you- it, I mean, if it's, I told you, if it's night, if it's night, if it's late at night mm. and I'm just here on my own, yeah. um, I do tend to feel that I need that um, energy late at night. Yeah. If it's like towards 10 and 11, when I tend to feel really, really tired, I need like a boost of energy and I can do with this kind of music. I really like a little, little pick me up. Yeah, yeah. But if I just came in the morning and I just want to start, <laughs> I cannot start with music. I, so you see, it's yeah. like moods depending on the day. So in the morning, it's really, really calming. Mm. I like to listen to a lot of Bosa Nova and like Brazilian music. Nice. Like that, yeah. yeah, it's kind of like nice. Yeah. Um, and then in the afternoon, I will go for, start to get more building up. Mm. Building up Depends on your- the vibe. I can almost picture, because I remember, and again, because the beauty of obviously, I mean, I've seen your, you know, you give me a little tour of your studio before and um. I mean, first thing first, you guys will have to know Diana's got an amazing studio. You can obviously see parts of it on her screen now, but has an incredible, incredible studio. And the one thing I've noticed was that, it, there we go, we're getting a little, a little stream. <laughs> one thing I've noticed is that um, you mentioned, obviously, your, your, your husband also um, is in that same space with you. And I can imagine, you mentioned the actual bass, and I can see you on one side with a bit of Brazilian chilled, Muy Tranquila music, and then you've got the drum and bass hardcore. That's like, like a line between where it blurs between the difference. Um, yeah. That, that's yeah, he, me, doesn't, that's, that's quite he, he doesn't come he comes at night so we swap okay. sure, sure. we have a five-year-old so then we just do someone said like we treat him as a baton and then we just pass it over <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> <We> love <just> <laughs> <sing>. <laughs> little man's just stuck in between the the, the waves yeah. of music I love that um, um yeah let us know in the chat you know what what kind of um do you need music vibes when you're working do you have to work I'm talking like you've got a deadline due within the next two hours you need to focus what is what is your thing are you are you music and also, I mean, it's criminal not to mention it, but we also say, I mean, I tend to do it as well, but like having Adobe Live on just in the background, because I don't know if you find it, Diana, but sometimes when you can have people having a conversation and you're working, that sometimes is quite nice and therapeutic because it's, it's background noise, right? You're kind of with it, but it's also just background noise. And sometimes I find that helps um, when I'm working rather than singing along to, uh, I mean, I won't say any particular names, but just saying, sing along to a particular uh, album or, or track because I get so lost in my own little space. No one wants that. I, yeah. I do like having a, a podcast or like a session, but I mm. struggle because if you like if you're really watching another way life, you really want to focus on what you what they are teaching. Mm. And sometimes mm. yeah. So I, I do like to listen to podcasts, it's really nice. Nice, nice. Design nice. ones. But you know, the the Adobe streams are really good too, because yeah, it feels like sometimes you just want a little bit of company while you're doing that, your work. that's the key and i think as well the time because obviously we're both um so for anyone who doesn't know so we got diana who's based in bristol and i'm based in london so it's definitely a, a uk vibe today but the difference obviously with you know with the us and the time difference i always find if i'm having to do quite a late night project or um you know working to a bit late obviously everyone's gone to bed whatever but it's nice because adobe live is still very much going on for the us side of things so it's for me it's nice to kind of have in the background you know it just feels like I'm not the only one who's working late at night it's just like it's the world is also still awake so um yeah please let us know and I can see in the chat we've got um everyone's kind of putting in there what they tend to do um we've got Arby who said yeah I always work with music um good shout and we've got Anna Diana who's absolutely loving your work and said hi Diana you're the best 
um, wow. from Anna from Anna Brake. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, so yeah, thank you for the uh, lovely comments and keep those keep those coming in. We'd love to hear them. Yeah, please do. So I'm trying to do these flowers in here. Let's see, they didn't come out so well when I did them by hand, but I'm going to try to save them because you know we can save everything in Photoshop. So that is a good. Yeah. And you mentioned the the magic S word there, saving. Like it's it's a it's a running joke here at Adobe Live. But and I don't know if Anika's still in there, but we always have one of our lovely hosts and and designers, Anika, who who likes to throwing a don't forget to press save, because we are all well. I can't I don't want to say put all of us in the same category, but I am more so as well. Um, prone to occasionally forget the old save as or save. So uh, always say those files, people. You don't want to lose those files. Does it happen to feeling. you that you lose things? I I know because I think I'm quite on it like that. I mean, I like I said, I I I'm a bit of a um, planner. Like I have like a I'm the kind of guy that will have a save and save as probably version three or four. But occasionally, you know, it it slips through the cracks. You just because you, you're so locked in, and I think more so when if I'm saying doing InDesign because I work with publishing quite a lot, so editorial, and you start your new document, you create, and you're working. And then your brain should straight away go to save as, right? So you know you can just press save throughout and it's calm and it's done. But I know there's definitely been times when I'm working and I'm, I'm doing quite a lot. And I definitely save eventually, but I'm like, oh, I'm sort of sailing quite close to the wind here because I haven't saved for like the past half hour and I've just gone straight into it. So um, let us know, chat. Am I the only one that does? Surely not. I feel like people do. People do do that. I'm not the only one. Please don't make me feel like the only one. Um, let us know in the chat if anyone else forgets to save. But um, yes, always, always do a save because it's, um, yeah, it will save a lot of uh, sleepless nights for yourself. I have, I, have, well. I have lost files by not saving them. I have, uh, I have lost a few that, you know, just you're really into it and then maybe the computer just can't handle it and then just shuts off. And then mm. you are like, oh. You're so, almost hoping so that when you log on, it's still... Uh, like, like for up. example, when when I am drawing in the iPad, it's it's really nice because it saves it all the time, so you don't mm. have to be worried about that. And I I'm always out of battery, so it's like I'm doing something that <laughs> oh, out of battery. Oh, I've lost it. Um, yeah, but I don't oh, save no, often. I rather have it in the cloud, mm. and uh, and it just kind of saves automatically as you're working. Very good shout. Very good shout. It's just peace of mind, isn't it? Just knowing it's mm -hmm. it's there. Um, yeah, there we go. I feel like we definitely plugged to, to save, save, save. So we are, uh, yeah, we like to we like to save our Adobe Live, but um, we're good. And I'll say, I mean, again, we always say things in Adobe Hemisphere goes universe goes very, very quick. And we are perhaps about 20 minutes, 15 minutes until we hit our um, not say 15 minutes until we hit our artist spotlight so um definitely stay tuned because it's not long now and uh, and it's a good one so yeah please stay tuned but for now any questions you guys have for diana definitely share it could even be a question based on what music she likes i mean you touched on what music she likes but um she mentioned she likes a drum and bass towards the evening pick her <laughs> brains on drum and bass questions who knows um yeah a little fun fact for you diana i used to work at a drum and bass club many many years ago like um I mean, that's a whole different topic for another stream. But yeah, many, many times ago, which is, uh, yeah. I think it's nice when you are in the environment for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when you want a night out. <laughs> do you, do you, what, what music do you listen to when you're working? Are you like drum and bass? Uh, yeah. No. Well, do you know what? Back when I was like college, so like 16-year-old me, def I was into dubstep and drum and bass, like heavily, heavily, heavily. Um, but now... It, it rained. So my, my wife is Spanish and I'm listening to quite a lot of, um, you know, some Spanish music and sometimes instrumental as well. It's nice to listen to things about lyrics. Um, so whether it's the guitar or, or things like that being played, um, and it depends on the beats as well. If I need to really focus, you need a bit of an up tempo, right? Like you said, to kind of get you, get you going. Um, so yeah, each to their own, but it's always nice to, to hear what you guys think as well. Yeah, I think there's a, I think music is very, I don't know, important for creativity in a way. It really, mm. it really helps so much with your mood. I've, mm. some, sometimes I come to the studio and then I can, I'm so busy, I can't be able to put music and then I go for like the whole day without it. Um, yeah, that happens. Very, very totally. rarely. Yeah, it's, it's mm. not very often. But. but even like in places like going to coffee shops as well, I always find, I have my headphones on, but sometimes... 
if I'm reading something, for example, I can't listen to music. So like, it's more, I don't mind the background noise of just, even the barristers working or just people in the background, you know, I'm not saying I listen to them chatting, that's weird. But do you know what I mean? Just like background noise and it, it's it's muted. And it's almost like to a point where you can just do your thing, right? And you can focus. And then when you're in a good place, get back onto the music. So um, yeah, each to their own, but it's always good to hear. Um, we've got a question from Elizabeth Fidina who said, what's your favorite poster stamp that you designed or like working on the most? Um, cause I haven't done, no, I think, I think these ones probably are the ones that I'm liking the most. Cause if we go back and show, I think, is, isn't it funny that the most recent work that you have done is the one that you're really into and you always yeah. feel like you, it does, don't, don't you feel like that? Like if you have that to go happens. back to some other work, you feel, oh, that's too old. I don't like to go back. <laughs> I can vintage, live, vintage. Live, live the moment with, with whatever I'm doing. And yeah. And so I always, well, actually, Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Dan. Yeah, yeah, I think I think this one. This yeah. one could turn into something interesting. Maybe I like this one a lot because I haven't seen it yet develop into the final thing, and I'm really mm. looking forward to it. So I, it's hard to pick from all the things that you have done, isn't it? It's like a lot. have done so much stuff every single day, every single week. You're producing a new piece of work every single day. Mm. Um, month you have a new different subject so mm. i do i do like the things that are challenging and, and it's funny i heard something that paul is made you know paul smith is this designer and then he said people are not looking to what you have done but to what you're going to do next mm. because that you did it already so then sure. when next and then it's the anticipation of what it's going to be the next thing that is going to happen mm. I, quite like, I quite like that um Looking to to the future of what the the work mm. will be. That's a really good point. And it's funny because I I I don't know if and again if anyone in the chat has done this, please do please let us know. But there's been t occasionally where I mean I've got my old portfolio in my um in like my family shed from when I was at uni and I, I it was a while back actually I don't know maybe like a year ago and I was cleaning stuff at the shed and I saw my old work um from like going back I don't know 24 year old me but it's interesting when you see work from when you were even studying and you and to see now and I don't know like there's parts of you that are like or parts of myself at the time that think oh, I can't believe I created something like that but then I thought actually for the for the time it when it was it was okay because that was the best what I could produce at that period so you shouldn't think of it as like it feels weird now that you perhaps are more sharpened in your in your um craft it's more of that was the process you went through in that period so I think that's totally natural. And um, it's quite nice kind of looking back on old old projects. Maybe we don't do that as much as freelance because we're so focused on the next thing that we don't stop, reflect and digest. It's more full steam ahead. But um, let us know in the chat if you if you live here now and again, if you look back on old projects, um, or even on Instagram, if you're, if you're posting stuff on your own social, do you ever do the occasional scroll right to the very bottom and think, oh my gosh, I remember that project. Um, yeah. No, but I think it's I think it's nice what you're saying because I feel with my work I'm always informing the new things from what I've done before. And mm. sometimes you feel like three years ago I wasn't able because I didn't have that skill, but I have that skill now. So exactly. I can really push. So like I love to archive all my work, everything that I have done, even if it's like not nice or because you don't do like good looking things all the time you always do like things that are really good and then things that are not good at all but you need those in there because mm. they are potential ideas that could develop in the future to something and when i look back into those i always feel like there is so much information and so much potential to turn that idea into something really good so mm. i i do like scrolling back on my instagram to feel yeah, that's good Hmm. Yeah, to feel like yeah, maybe there was something important in there that I could. Mm. Or sometimes doesn't it happen to you that you look at something that you did before and then you feel like, hmm, I will have done this like this way before yeah. I do this. Exactly. Yeah. It's like a trip down memory lane, right? It's um, I I think it's I think it's a good thing to do, and I it's one of those ones where we perhaps can't do it as often because life kicks in. You know, we're forever working with different clients, but even if it's like an annual thing, like I know I, I definitely try to, even with freelancing, because I'm fairly new in freelancing, spent like at the end of last year, kind of looking back on old projects and, you know, just thinking nothing to post or to share on social media, just more to think from a personal, you know, feeding, you know, happy of what you've, what you've created. And, and even more importantly, 
the work that you've done and the impact it might have had on the community or for, or for the client. It's um it's a refreshing experience, I always think. But um but let us know in the chat again if if you ever found do that or maybe this has given you inspiration to actually go look in the shed in the attic wherever you might have your old artwork um and dust the cobwebs off and, and share it please do let us know um and on that note about five minutes i'd say until we uh and dive into our artist spotlight so uh you're in a good place for being inspired so stay tuned because uh it's a good one yeah yeah i think um keeping keeping things keeping things is good in the prayer because mm. you never know when you're going to need them in the future so this looks great you know there's this section right now where you zoomed in and obviously we can't really get a vague, but I that's I would almost love that as like a desktop background on my computer because it's so there's a lot happening in that space with the layers and the colors. Um, and please let us know in the chat because I feel like I'm not the only one that likes that, but there's a lot that's happening there, um, which I think is really really cool. Yeah, just it's like fine. honing it's, in on it. It's, it's it's quite raw in here if you look at it from up close. So yeah, but, but because this is obviously going to be like an image that I'm going to mm. share. Um, maybe digitally, maybe quite small, then I'm really not that concerned about the super close up of it. Sure. Like, do, do you, how, when do you design, you are concerned about like in depth, like the resolution of it, if you like zoom in a lot, mm. or sometimes you really don't mind because it's just going to be printed so small that you really don't need to be so, you know, mm. painful yourself about no, i mean in, in this context it was just more when you zoomed in on the screen because it's funny because obviously I'm, I'm viewing on split screen now but just seeing when you zoomed in there and i went to my screen it just visually it looked really engaging and i could just see that and it just in itself as a poster or whether it's a desktop background um i think it looked really really cool at the time and actually it remind me of um i want to go slightly off piece here but do you remember a show and i don't know if it was only in the uk but it's called art attack Mm -hmm. Do you know that show? And yeah. I remember this guy, um, I think it right, Neil Buchanan, I think his name was, and he would create these visuals and he zooms, it's basically like, like installation, massive, you know, go to like a meadow, design things. And he, he designs it very small and then the camera pans out, almost like, like aerodrome kind of style. And then when you see the grand scale of what he's created, you can then see, but they pick up on small elements and what you just did there, where you zoom out and then you zoom, you zoom in and zoom out, you see the context of it all. Um, I think that's cool. I think that's cool. Um, yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I do like I, that guy was very clear. I wasn't here. He was awesome. Like I, in fact, definitely going back to that was my school days. We're going back some years now, but it was definitely after school. I was watching Art Attack, and um, please let us know in the chat. Does anyone know Art Attack? Because that was an awesome show. If they redo that, I don't know if I'll be happy or sad. I'm not too sure, but yeah, it was a very good show for its time. Nineties, I think it was as well. Um, yeah. Very good. Yeah, I think they do it now for, but I think things things have changed slightly a bit. <laughs> I'm old school, like, yeah. Maybe it's just like it's modern <laughs> art attack, uh, NFTs art attack. I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah, there we go. And Becca's in the chat is also saying um, she was thinking about this. I, said, I was thinking the same thing about the zoomed in frame. Um, so she's also quite digging the uh, the colors as well. So there uh, we go. Cool. Yeah, so I think with this flower, mm, I think I have my issues with this. This flower would probably be something that I will replace and remake. But now nice. I can bring the leaves around. I think, yeah, wow. just getting getting yeah. closer in there. Uh, obviously, I take a lot of a lot of time to try to create something. But I'm I'm really happy with like the head and then the mm. hair and and the piece of clothing so it's looking great it's and then i mean that's the whole this is the beauty of when we have our streams that it's it's a case to take your time creating because we're, we're seeing the process we're seeing you know you explain about you know who you are as a designer and um it's great obviously to finish of course the designs you create on live on stream but the process is so important and i think a lot of people i can see from the chat have been inspired and, and just to kind of hear the, the thought process so then um, always take as much time as you need because we would rather that than, than see it rushed and it's, it's looking good. But um, we're very close, I'd say, into perhaps into our artist spotlight. But um, I'll let you do this last little bit and then we maybe jump in to us. But we'll definitely come back as well so um, so you can finish off. Well, um, if you want, we jump yeah. in because I was going to leave and that probably take a little bit yeah. of time. Yeah. Well, so let's we do that. Let's um, let's jump into our artist spotlight and then we'll definitely come back to uh, play some love. So, uh, so, yes, my friends in the chat, it's that time now where... 
we're going to be diving into our artist spotlight and we have a good one today uh well we have a good one all the time but in today in particular it's a great one and we have uh amber assay um who's an amazing designer and um yeah so uh what we tend to do is in this part we'll just pick out some projects um diana maybe we can pick one maybe two each and just kind of have a little dive through and and see what we're saying um i mean there's a lot that's there but what's what's something sticks out to you in terms of you're looking um, at that you this know, like... one i quite like you yeah. have a look at this one so let's have a look at this let's one. do it let's dive into it so let's have a look at it like a fully nice. and then we we'll come back to to the beginning you chose that. the tastiest one to pick if you're dying. You chose pizza and it's the I evening of it. Are you hungry? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, there we go. My belly's rumbling live on stream. Um, <laughs> what I love as well, like, like do you see that she's used obviously like the real live shots and then the overlap with typography? Um, you know, it, it's rather than using, you know, like an illustration or a, a graphic, it's it's real life. It looks great. I mean, it looks really yeah. Nice. Also, you can see like there is a a type of illustration that is quite muted in the in the background mm. that belongs to like the the logo. But I do like the um mm. yeah the use of the of the real life photography is really really interesting, and also the colors. I love the how. Mm. I was just thinking, you know, is this denim or like a kind of like a cotton? Yeah, piece? I was thinking yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. it's um. It's yeah, it's those little details where it just adds a bit more, um, more depth, right, to the design. And actually, if you if you scroll down, because um, one thing I don't know if you ever find it, but I definitely geek out when I go to restaurants and see menu designs. Not all the time because we want to have your dinner, but I think it's you know, people spend time obviously creating these, and even I can see obviously you know she's using the kind of column grids to create, but also adding a lot of full bleed imagery um, in a post, maybe imagery for each section and. I don't know if they're like maybe signature dishes, um, but yeah, I think it looks it looks really great in that kind of mock up. I mock think up that style. really helps because, especially when I go to a restaurant, I like to see the photo of the dish. Sometimes mm. I don't understand all the ingredients if I have to read them. Yeah. Also, you have the categories in red, which is really very easy to spot. You know the types of ingredients yes. if you want like salads or soup. I think that really draws you in. And I, th and I think that's really good communication because sometimes when you have a menu, you get lost and you never mm. know where things are. And then you have to, you know, kind of, um, yeah, go through a lot of information to find what you're looking for. So I think it really stands out. Yeah, no, definitely. Just scroll through and um, <clears throat> it's not, I mean, I'm curious to know if if, if this was printed actually, which is because again, mock-ups, we always tend to, when we see designs, we, we see them on mock-ups. And again, that's always a good one because, it allows you kind of there we go it's a good example of a good mock-up there but you it gives context to how the design will look um almost like a selling technique as well to clients so you know we're, we're definitely a, a soft spot for, for mock-ups at adobe live and um yeah these look these looks great um, i think she also like, yeah she, lo she also likes textures so you can see textiles mm. wood you can see brick so mm. i think that really kind of makes it more relatable because then you understand this as a space you know, yeah. like restaurant as a space, and then the materials really help you. I wonder if the interior was probably informed by the yeah, guide, or if the guide informed the interior. Because often, when you see a little experience of something, it's related with the, the interior is part of the of the branding as well. Mm, that's a good point. And what's quite cool, even scrolling from the top to bottom, we just done. We've gone through so many different types of deliverables, whether it's print website digital billboards she's really covered pretty much uh, pretty much most basis of, of how you know a project or a brand should kind of work across so um that's an awesome one um should we dive into perhaps another one we'll do um we'll do two we'll do two we'll do one each and um i'd say for my one can you scroll up a little bit further what else is there uh ooh, i mean there's some good choices there right i like the um can we go to that top left one actually top left hand corner top left, this one yeah let's have a look at that one Okay. My brain sees prints. I'm like, it's nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, nice, look. nice, simple. So, so this is about. Let's have a look. Ah, okay. It's kind of like a. I think poster. it tends to be at the bottom sometimes. Yeah. It's like it feels like a brand. Mm. Clothing, maybe. Let's have a look. It feels very, yeah, kind of like a lifestyle. I, but I don't know. It mm. could be like, what could it be? I think what's what's nice as well is I mean it's it's yeah I think towards the end you usually have the information but what's cool about this it's it's clearly a an outdoor project and even adding that you know the kind of leaf that kind of creeps over the design it just adds 
there's something about doing that than just having a plain mock-up on a colored background it just adds a bit more of a i don't know you immerse yourself more i'd say with the design um so I yeah that that's the cool one. yeah i think the leaf really it, and, it, and it's a very simple detail it's not it's mm. not a lot going on but it really connects you with the outdoors and kind of exotic because exactly. it's, it's an interesting leaf you know it's not like an oak yeah. or anything. it's kind of a palm with something you will see like if you wear i don't mm. know in the beach yeah, and everything looks kind of very beachy and very um green and nature-like yeah. it's very summery um, i'm getting those summer vibes definitely i'm huh? getting those uh yeah, i'm getting those summer. nice vibes <laughs> Summer. You don't see summer in there. 2017. You're taking us. You're taking us back, Amber. You're taking us back. Um. So we dive into perhaps another one. So your last one, and I'll yeah. do one more. Then yeah. We do. What Let's do love this volume two because this is there could be a compilation of things. Ooh. So okay. this is something I find that is very tricky in a way because you have very little information to create something that stands out. So mm. how are you going to play that? Um. But she's got really good good examples because you see the sometimes it's a big big text with like a really small detail, mm. and you have ones that have like more iconography, um, hand lettering. Yeah, how even how even typography? I mean, the word room as well. How it collect, how it connects, and I mean that's the beauty of when you're working with you know with logos um, in that design where it's you can try you know different fonts together if it's a serif to sans serif, but also how they combine together. Um, and of course, like, legibility is key. Yeah, I don't like these jades. How do you say that? Jades or jades? Um, j oh, jades. I'd say like a silent e, yeah. maybe. Yeah, but, I do um, like because it's very, very simple. Mm, very clean. But it still have a lot, a lot to it. Mm. Um, also, it's easy, I guess, like to because sometimes when you have a logo, you also have to think like in the ways that you're going to place it within like a, you know, very like true. a presentation uh and mm. things like that and sometimes mm. when you have a lot of details it's become more difficult to find that space where to fit it so we, when it's mm. just like one word it just fits anywhere really easily this is what's really great as well um that that one just before as well which was with the icon i think those projects those logos i should say are awesome because you made a very good point about how that design will fit across the different you know deliverables whether it's it could even be iconography for you know all you know um for say Instagram and the, the profile pic. But what's nice is that you can imagine if the words are not being used, it's simply just the icon. And that could be used for letterhead. It could be used across anything. Um, and then when you've got a bit more space, you can actually use the full branding. So you, it allows you to kind of use, have two different ways of how you can communicate those, mm -hmm. the, the same brand. But um, yeah, it looks it looks really great. And, um, I, and I think you touch a really good point. Sometimes you don't need all of this information because you yeah. want icon to actually become the main uh element to be recognized by that kind of brand exactly it's, yeah it, it's really clever also the way she put it in here mm. this is this is lovely too because it makes me feel about like you know fields in yeah. very small um line work definitely got that vibe so um so perhaps we'll choose maybe one more and then i mean i feel like we could just browse quite a few but um question is what do we, ah okay i think i found my favorite one um being very much print can we go on the design variety one please right. um yeah that looks nice i'm already seeing print yes that looks good i'm this looks really digging nice. this one very i can i, I can see a, a almost a running theme where i think and i don't know if amber's in the chat but um she clearly like and is very good at typography you know her the choice of type um you know how she works with it as well and the color palettes is, is great I'm really liking that. Yeah, because it doesn't, it's very, it's very clean also, but it's very elegant. It doesn't feel mm. crowded. It feels very um and, and and I think you're right. She's she's using a lot of different mm. pipe to create the main artwork. Mm. And I think that's difficult mm. sometimes, don't you think, to to, to choose so many? I was just gonna mm. say yeah, that's a very good point. Cause you don't wanna over overkill with too with too much but the balance i think maybe because she has the um the graphical elements that kind of um you know bring together the different types and the hierarchy of it it kind of allows you to have a bit of a breather because sometimes having that many type on one space can be a bit overwhelming but i think she's done it in a, in a perfect way um but almost like really old school lettering because the content is herself and then she's mm. advertising herself through her printed kind of newspaper 
So yes, I think it's, it's really, really nice because you see she has all the icons in here that says all the services that she can freelance yeah, for. Yeah, that's then awesome. For her photo, that is also not like a typical photo, but it's like an illustration of all the things that she can cover with her work. That's um, very so I cool. think is, you know, like if I get these, yeah. um, really, really, I, I would really like to get something like this. Look who at need, this. Who, need, who needs a CV when you can get like a nice, beautiful <laughs> newspaper? That I I would highly employ you, definitely, definitely employ you on the you basis. Can of that. Do, but I think this is a clever way of showing yourself. It, actually, you it are is. using all the space to mm. produce different type of work and show all the range that you can create as an artist or design. For and then sure. you have you have the lovely card in here, like perfectly fitted. Yeah. With the, you know the um constraints of the amazing well amber i mean absolutely beautiful work i can see as well in the chat uh lovely audience absolutely loving design so uh so thank you for for being an artist spotlight and again for anyone who would like to potentially be featured for our next artist spotlight or even yourself there's a nice little tab in the behance chat artist spotlight if you click on there um you have opportunity to to recommend yourself or another awesome creative and and who knows you could be on the next adobe live uh, and we could be celebrating your work too so um so definitely get submitted and um yeah we love to see your work but amber amazing work um very very cool designs but we've got a bit more time should we perhaps dive into your last little bits that you're working on diana and then um we'll kind of yeah. do like a nice little wrap up in like 15 or so minutes 15.6 minutes there we go maybe so I'm, going to, I'm going to add one leaf and then maybe i go back to the design of the fish that was finished and then we can just look back nice. to that one and oh, then good. yeah i probably will finish this off tomorrow and be able to get it right it's also those things i feel that they take time mm. to understand and then you have to, my, my mom always says, just stop looking at it for a couple of hours. <laughs> yeah. Come with fresh eyes. Like if you really have the time sometimes. Did and you say then, your mom, your mom says that you said? Yeah, my mom says it whenever I'm working on that. something and then, and then I get really, you know, tired, yeah. exhausted. She said like, no, you need to just stop looking at it. And mama then knows just, best, Diana. Mama knows best yeah. always. And then I do that. It's funny because now when I come tomorrow, this probably will be the first thing that I will look at in the morning and then I'll be, mm, <laughs> I think I need to change this. Don't, don't, I mean, how, how do you do when you design? Do you take time in between or do you just throw the whole design? Mm, it depends. It, it dep We've had a tutorial because primarily that's kind of what I'm working. I can get so lost in it. I know I can. And I think it's one of those ones where it's probably healthier to stop every now and again, but I'm so in the zone that two hours could easily fly by and I wouldn't even realize. Um, but yeah, it depends on the, the, yeah, if it's a much more lengthier project, I'm working on a hardback publication and yeah, that, that needs time to digest and then, um, you know, space yourself out. Um, which I think is perfectly natural. I think for me as well, I, you know, stepping away from the screen is, is also quite healthy for mental wellbeing purposes, but also, um, you know, like we touched on before, getting inspiration from other places, just the screen is, is so important and then that way you produce you know better work as well so um definitely on the topic of, um just resonating from what your mum said diana i i echo that too um thank you diana's mum yes definitely <laughs> so uh, get get off it for a little bit mm. and yeah sleep sleep over it and then come on the next because i always find that some designs could be very frustrating some come out mm. really really easily but i feel that sometimes there are ones that don't that you fight a lot with them mm. in order to get them out and then sometimes they they wouldn't even work you just have to drop it and then just start from another <laughs> point of view and i very and i true. think that that happens to me a lot with different type of work that i do there are things that some days are very, very, um, bad, you know, much better than other days. Mm. So. I would say, Dana, we're about, because I definitely, I want, one thing I want hundred percent is to make sure that our lovely audience can follow up, you know, even after the stream is done, you know, with the work you're doing. And you mentioned that oh, you'll be working a bit more even tomorrow, um, not for a stream, my lovely friends, unfortunately, but more like on a behind closed doors. But I feel like maybe they can follow up on, on social, but I'd say we've got about maybe five minutes and then we'll do like a nice little, I know time is going so quick, I'm sorry, but uh, but maybe we do like a nice little five minutes and then we do like a, how our audience can maybe catch up with you as well. Um, yeah, so yeah. maybe I come back to this one and then just show the, well, this is 
this is um what I came up. This is this is one that is a bit more refined. And as I was showing you, I was using the vector file, but then towards the end, I realized this fish was really very confusing. So I decided to just because it's a stamp. Mm. I was thinking maybe I don't need to put too many elements, but one element that looks big. Mm. And then I did some color combinations. Let's just wear a bit, uh, and then I can show you. So I the desktop did... is so tidy, Diana. There we go. Getting, a... <laughs> Get, getting nice. in there. So this is so this is the first one that I did, which is sure. the color that I use. But I felt mm, you see, this is what I was telling you. I had to go and sleep over it. So when I came mm. back, I could just and then I came back to this one, which I think is probably more my favorite than than this this terms. Yeah, that looks cool. Mm. But then this is the this is the what's interesting is that I can <clears throat> manipulate the work in Photoshop these days mm. because it will allow me to even change <clears throat> everything if I want mm. it and then just doing all the work in the computer so I mm. think this is, this is a skill that I really want to master with time we could do a um I know we, we promised yesterday a little poll but I know time is time is of the essence sadly today but we could do, very quickly do now you've got two options left and right there is in the chat you know what do you what which ones do you prefer the left or the right design you know you can put that in a we would usually do a poll but maybe just put in the chat you know are you left are you right which designs do you like um yeah we'd love to know for me I, it's tricky because i the green makes the most sense potentially but then just because the well, not necessarily actually i do like the left i think maybe because the color palette it just kind of merges in quite well with the the fish in the scale but um yeah let us know in the in the chat are you are you team left are you team right um and then we'll let us know but yeah please keep going on Diana and uh, I'll feed that into you in a minute I feel that the green I I don't know I feel that I I that this is you know it draws you in more but it's a bit it creates more conflict within the mm. color I feel this one is a bit more calming for me but uh, I don't know. Sometimes it was really hard to try that because I wanted this piece to become purple and I couldn't mm. translate it to purple. So this is the closest that I get. And then yeah. on the option, I had the two fish together. But when I did this, I think, you know, the, oh, another thing that was interesting is that from, you know, having all the elements mm. digitalized, you can produce so many different variations of the same work as to you can have the one in purple and then the mm. one in blue and and just replicate and then the fish becomes a digital asset that it can be used in many other ways. If I wanted to create an aquarium or if I wanted to create like tropical fish, then mm. I have it as a um as an element that I can pull in anytime. So I think this way for me it feels mm. I started making everything handmade 10 years ago. And I don't think that I use the computer for any reason. So everything was hand draw, hand cut, hand produce. But then yeah. as the jobs are starting to come and the demand became higher and bigger for my work, then I start finding all of these digital resources as how I can get like an extra machine to cut the pieces, how I can, you know, make sure that I plan all the work in Illustrator so that I can cut many times and replicate it many times. But yeah. now this is stage that I am is when I am arriving. I, I have a little bit of a nostalgic feel to this because I like to keep all my pieces physical. Yeah. There's nothing for me more exciting than finish the piece physically and be like, this is it. I with that, this yeah. project, I couldn't mm. get to mm. that stage. So these pieces are little pieces physically, but... Mm. They were only put together digitally. So this imagine it will only exist digitally. It wouldn't exist mm. paper collage in real life. And I, I think I mean I'm 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 having different thoughts in here because the other thing is that I don't have a lot of space in my studio to store many ideas and many works. And you know, with 10 years of work, you don't want yeah. to do anything. So you need to start becoming more proactive in a way. Like how can I produce something, make mm. the most of it? but also keep it in my archive so that it doesn't take a lot of space because when the projects are finished, what yeah. do you do with like a one by one piece? And I have many of those that I've done like book covers and they are physically and they are made like one meter to like 175. Mm. What do you do with that after? You don't have any use for that anymore. So it makes mm. sense to just start putting all the word digital now. And yeah, Good uh, point. yeah. It's more resourceful now. 
think yeah because most of you know my friends that do illustration they hardly see their works printed or become mm. physical you know everything is like social media editorials everything that goes online so yeah. some people really miss the touch of having something done and be able to see it in you know existing in mm. what you say in print or in an object um but i guess it's just like the new dynamic of it's interesting to see how they work uh change yeah. mu mutate so much because i never thought i would get to this stage with what i was doing that's all i think it's it's cool to to hear that that process where things is, it's organically happened for you and it, i think it's been amazing over these two days to kind of see that process and um, and actually just before we let me do like a nice little you know how people can catch up to find out who you are there, there seems to be an, an overall winner with the left or the right and the left one seems to be the one in the chat which everyone's kind of going to so there we go team left has has oh. overwhelmingly won so um that's great to know but but diana i know we've got about maybe four or five minutes left and i would love our audience to know how they can reach out to you so do you have like a instagram you want to show or a website so we can get some uh, call to actions Let's go and share because that would be really nice if anyone is interested in seeing the final pieces or seeing all mm. the type of things that I do. You can reach me on Instagram at uh, my long name, which is Diana Beltran. <laughs> <laughs> and then here I share a lot of things about my studio. I'm doing this mm. reels where I share the process. I think some people find that interesting. I also share, you know, because sometimes the work takes a lot of time. So I also like to share different progress of how the pieces are turning up. So I have mm. like sketches or then I have different like bits of elements of things that I'm working on with color. If this one didn't show up. Um, that yeah. Fox one is so cool. I remember when I first knew I was hosting and I sort of thought I was like, oh my God, I showed my wife this and I was like, that's insane. Like I am, I am really obsessed with your work. I think I'm excited to see the the final piece of from today on social media, how it kind of looks or your website. Yeah. Um, and then they can find me also on my website, which is, doesn't go with the web flow actually. It's just Diana with Tran Herrera. It's because I get <laughs> the editing of, of, of what I can. Yeah. So in my website, you can see the different projects. I also have a thing mm. called a blog in here, which I, I, I found that was really nice. helpful. Because yeah. I can put my the articles where I've been sharing blogs or in magazines and then just little things of progress that I don't fit feel it fit to a category like a project as such or yeah. um or a piece of work. So just things that I'm things about my studio, things about my work, and then I also have like my projects, which is like a compilation for all the things that I do. So you can scroll down through kind of like a gallery. And <laughs> That's so cool. Wow. Elements. That is very, very cool. You must have so much fun designing those. I feel like how, yeah, how could you not have fun with those? Because they are amazing. What pieces. do you mean? Remember, you making these beds? Yeah, like like physically like, creating these elements. Like you, it, they're amazing. Like they are, and I can see in the chat people are absolutely adoring your because I know you've got the online cartel. You got a shop now as well. I remember yeah, seeing yeah, that. Yeah, I so, do. Um, I do have know. a shop in here, which is every now and then someone comes and buys. Oh, so I have products. I have like I made these nice. games for, for this brand called Gallison, and then it's like. Ah. Um, my my element as illustration and we're doing different so there is a puzzle two puzzles that are launching in the autumn um nice. which is going to be really exciting and then i yeah i have some photography some people find the photography interesting and they want to hang them in their walls which i feel yeah. really you know happy about and then in the work in the work part then i have my projects so you can mm. hear come here and read a little bit of what I did and see the photography. I do love taking photos of everything that I do. It's that one of the main parts of my of my practice. So mm. it's beautifully uh, curated for sure. Like very, very you can tell a lot of details got into the composition of how, you know, everything is laid out. Um and I feel like it's a reflection on your personality as well. Like you mentioned like you like everything quite neat, organized and your website perfectly reflects that. Um and actually if you've seen all these amazing work on shops just put it out there guys christmas is not far away ish so get those christmas presents potentially for i mean i'm gonna potentially buy one because uh, it looks good not potentially i will there we go i put it out there um because it looks really really great it looks really yeah. really great but um my, my brother my brother did this one for me and it was it was very hard because when we were talking about how to pull information together and how we yeah. create uh, the the system of the website it was very interesting to come up with what was the nice. best solution for it so this is awesome. 
Or well, Diana, I mean, it's um, there's two days. Where have they gone by, right? It's gone quick, but it has been insane to see your work process. And um, I and I feel like hopefully I echo everyone in the chat who's um who's really enjoyed these two days and, and to see your work process. But um, just gonna give you guys a nice little wrap up um before we before we go to bed um or depending on which part of the world you're on. Uh, Adobe Live will be back tomorrow uh, with our evangelists for a full day of masterclasses. Uh, followed by a new episode of Office Hours with Nick Longo and Andrew Horsfriddle. And also, if you want to take your design skills to the next level, which of course you do, who doesn't? Uh, join Delta Tango Mike at 9 a.m. Pacific time and James Bonanno at 2 p.m. Um, for the latest show on pro tips. Um, and then you can take a bit of the de- dig deep a bit into the learning techniques uh, into the different apps that they'll be working on too. So, uh, so definitely follow that live stream um, and join them on the discourse discord voice chat to continue the conversation and ask them questions directly but on that note diana it's been my absolute pleasure to to host you you've been awesome um have you enjoyed it yeah yeah it's been great yeah, yeah but it's been very very enjoyable Thank wicked you. wicked and i can see in the chat everyone i'm sure yeah like the comments are coming in thick and fast so definitely follow diana on those uh social media links which she said and of course a big thank you to our adobe live team our moderators and of course to you guys the chat because without you guys there is no adobe live right you guys are what keep us alive so it's all good so um on that note take care my friends be safe and we'll see, see you guys very very soon bye